If you want to learn a little bit more about how Fusion works, today we are building three different graphics inside of Fusion. These are super simple, and just by working through and kind of following along, it'll teach you a lot about how Fusion works. I think this will be really helpful, especially if you are brand new to Fusion, but even somebody who's been using it a little bit, I think you might get something. I don't know why I'm talking like that. Let's go. All right, so here I am in the Fusion page. And the first thing that we're gonna do is make kind of a drop down text title. I'm gonna start with a background node. So on the very left here, let's grab a background node and I'll just drag this into my flow. Before we get started, I'll right click on the background of the flow and go to arrange tools to grid. And now they kind of snap to this grid, which helps keep things nice. I'll take the output of background one and drop it onto media out. And now we have a black screen. Now we probably don't want a black screen. We want this to be transparent. So with the background node selected, let's go over here to the inspector and I'll take this alpha and I'll turn it all the way down. So now we have a clear screen with the background size set to, well, for mine, it's 1920 by 1080. Now, what I like to do with motion graphics is generally design how it will look after it animates in. So let's make some text. We'll go here to this third little button, text plus. I'll grab this and drag it in. And here we have our text plus node. I'll take the output of that and drop it on the output of our background one, and that will make a merge node. So now we'll have our text merged over our background, but we don't have any text yet. So with the text node selected, We'll go over here to the inspector and I'll say drop down and let's make this a nice font. You can pick whatever you want and I'll make this a little bit bigger. And you know what? We'll just uh, maybe add a little tracking too because I feel like having a little bit of space between that, that kind of looks nice sometimes. Okay, so there's our drop down text. So this is what this is gonna look like when it's kind of finished animating in. And what we want this to do is kind of drop down out of nothing. And generally, if you want something to kind of appear somewhere on screen, but not somewhere else on screen, you have to use a mask. So what we'll do is add a rectangle mask. I'll drag this down under my merge. We can really add this to the text or the merge, but we'll just do it this way. And I'll grab the output of our rectangle and put that into the blue input of our merge. And now we see that merge node is only putting this text over the background inside of that rectangle. So we can use that to our advantage by just putting the rectangle over our text like this, which is what we want. So now anything that is inside this rectangle we can see and everything outside of it we can't see, which doesn't make any difference now because we don't have anything outside of the rectangle. But if we take, for instance, this merge and we grab the center and we push the Y around, we can see as we move this up or down, it goes outside of the mask. So what we'll do is we'll start with it up here and then it'll just kind of drop down out of nothing. To get this animation, we have to set a keyframe. A keyframe is just telling Fusion that you want some control to be a certain value at a certain time. So we're gonna animate this center and at about one second, that's 24 frames in, we want it to look like this. So at 24 frames, we'll go over to center and click on this little keyframe diamond, and that'll tell it at 24 frames to be at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now let's take our playhead and move this back to zero. And we're gonna take our center and I'm gonna push this up just so it's totally outside of our mask. That means it has completely disappeared and it's automatically added a keyframe there because I was at a different point in time. And if I kind of scrub through this, we'll see this drops down. So now it drops down out of nothing pretty nice. The only thing that we have to change is when this drops down, it kind of stops really suddenly and it just doesn't look that nice. So what we want that to do is slow down before it stops. The easiest way to do that is with the spline panel. In the upper right corner, we have these buttons here. And if I click on where it says spline, that'll open up a panel down here. Let's check whatever we want to adjust, which is going to be our displacement for our merge. And then let's click this zoom to fit button right here. That's gonna give us a graph of the motion that we've animated here. So it starts at zero and it goes all the way up to one like that. What we want this to do is instead of going at a constant speed and then immediately stopping, we want it to kind of slow down before it stops. So we can select this keyframe just by clicking on this little kind of lock here and I can grab this handle and move it around like a curve. So I could push this up and make it flat like that so that we have this nice gradual kind of hill or I can just select it and hit F on the keyboard and that's gonna flatten out that tangent right there. So now as we play this back, it slows down nicely before it stops. So it just goes shoop like that, yeah. And that's pretty much it for this graphic. I'll switch over to the edit page and just drag this in so we can play this back in real time. And there we go. There's our nice little drop down graphic. Yeah, not too bad, right? Let's do another one, shall we? I'll rename this drop down. Let's make a new one. I'll say new fusion composition. 
and hit create. Double click on that to open it up in Fusion. And we'll do the same thing. Let's grab a background and connect it to our media out. Select the background and take the alpha down like that. And the next thing we'll do is a center reveal. Now this is kind of a similar process, but it has a couple different elements here. Let's just grab our text to start out with. And again, we'll merge this over our background. I'll select the text and we'll call this center reveal. Do open sans condensed, sure. There's our text. Let's say we want to have a background here around our text. There are a bunch of different ways to do that. One way that you could do that is take a background node and we'll put this in before our text one, which will put it behind it. We'll select this background and we'll just make it kind of a red. And let's say we want this to be a box around our text. Well, we can take that same kind of rectangle like we used in the first one. I'll drag this down and connect it to our merge. And now we have this box that we can resize around our text like this. And that looks classy, right? That looks nice. But now let's say we want to animate it. That's why we're calling this the center reveal. We want this to kind of reveal out of the center. So at frame 24, we want this to be right here, but we're going to have this kind of reveal out of the center from nothing like this and go shoop like that, like it's kind of opening up. So at frame 24, we'll add a keyframe to our width slider right here. And then over at zero, we'll take the width all the way down. So now as we play this back, it opens up out of nothing. Of course, let's adjust this with our spline panel. I'll open that up again, select what we want to adjust and go to zoom to fit. Select this last keyframe and hit F on the keyboard to flatten it out. And now we have it opens up and then it slowly stops. So that's nice for the background, but the text is just kind of there the whole time. The cool thing about nodes is that we can have this mask that's affecting our background affect our text as well. So if I take this rectangle one and drag an output onto this other merge for our text, now it's masking both of those at the same time, and it's really not any more work. That's the nice thing that I like about nodes is you can connect a node to multiple different things. So that's a nice kind of classy way to make a graphic like that. Super simple, right? Bring this in. There's our center reveal. Very nice. Let's do one more. Hold on just a minute. ResolveCon 2022, it's coming up. It's October 1st and 2nd. We're gonna have live teaching. We're gonna have discussion panels. We're gonna have tons of giveaways. Oh baby, it's gonna be the best. It's the DaVinci Resolve Learning Event of the Year sponsored by Blackmagic Design. And the best part is it's free to watch right here on YouTube. Make sure you register using the link below. Back to the video. I'll right click, make a new fusion composition, and we'll call this Smash. Double click on our composition here. Set it up just like before with the background. The background is clear. And let's grab our text and merge our text over our background. And this text will say smash. Let's do open sans condensed again, and we'll make this a little bigger this time, something like that. This time we want this text to kind of fly into the screen from behind the camera. So we want it to end right about here. So let's do like 12 frames. And this time let's actually animate this with a transform node. I'll just put this after everything. We could also put this between the text and the merge, but let's just transform everything we have so far. And now this transform node is going to move everything around as a group that has been put into it. So I can grab this transform and I can move stuff around. And we're gonna start at frame 12 and we're gonna keyframe the size as well as maybe the center and maybe even the angle. Let's just change this a little bit. And then here at zero frames, the first frame, we're gonna push the size up a lot and we're gonna change the angle a little bit and maybe we'll leave the center about where it is. So now we have this animation where it smashes into the background like this, but it looks kind of weird for it to just stop like that. It would be nice if it kind of bounced a little bit. So let's play around with this here in the spline panel and I'll just close the inspector just so we have a little more room here. And I'm also going to hit this little button in the upper right just to give us one viewer. And let's select our displacement and our angle and our size and click on zoom to fit. And now we have our graphs of everything we've animated. I'll select all of the end keyframes and hit F on the keyboard to flatten those out. And now we have this kind of coming in and it definitely looks nicer, but I still kind of want it to bounce a little bit. So let's go back to zoom to fit and now Let's just take a look at our size. So I'll just get rid of displacement here, get rid of angle. So we just have size, zoom to fit, and we have this sizing down, 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 down. But I can click anywhere on this line to add a keyframe. And so maybe we'll add a keyframe and just kind of push it down like this. And now what'll happen is this'll come down and it'll get smaller and then it'll get a little bit bigger. So let's take a look. 
yeah, so now there's a little bit of a bounce, boing, which is pretty cool. And depending on how detailed you want to get, you can kind of push this up and down like this, select all of these and hit F on the keyboard and make something like that. And you can have this kind of smash in there. If we want to adjust some of the timing, we can select multiple keyframes and click on this little box thing right here. And that'll let us kind of stretch these out a little bit, which is really helpful for these kind of animations. Yeah, there we go. So now it's really stretching a little bit. I think maybe it's a little bit wild, so we'll just take that down. There we go. So now we have this kind of bouncy thing. And with a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of playing with it, we can get something looking really neat. I'll go ahead and close the spline panel here, and we'll switch back over to our edit and drag in smash. And now we have this kind of smashy title. Very cool. So there's three easy graphics that you can make even as a fusion noob. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope if it, if it shone a little bit of light on the subject, well, why don't you let me know? I, I would love to hear about it. What was confusing that is now clearer? What's confusing about fusion that is still confusing about fusion? Maybe I'll make a video about that, huh? Why don't you wait and see? <laughs> I'm not mad, I'm happy. I'm so glad you're here. Have, a, have an awesome day.